cozy porch is trending on Pinterest. We just made these solar lanterns using only light burn, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. If you like the Do It Builder to make it. So do we. And we have new videos each week. This week, we're doing a solar lantern to keep with our cozy porch theme. Cozy porch is up about a thousand percent over there on the Pinterest trending tab. Solar Lantern is up about 82%. Last week with our cozy front porch, we made a porch rule sign. This week, we're gonna shed some light on that. I think these lanterns are beautiful. And I think you could do a whole craft booth of these lanterns, especially if you make them themed. So you could do different themes. You could add a sports theme. You could add a seasonal theme. Father's Day is coming up. You can make it a grilling theme. All you have to do is change out the panels and you could even sell themed panel kits to go along with them. So this week we're gonna show you how to make these lanterns super easy, right in light burn. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We are gonna use some quarter inch MDF, like Surprise. we always do. <laughs> but you can make these out of anything. You can make them out of some quarter inch birch, some eighth inch birch, maple, I don't know, I see a lot of like veneer stuff you could probably use too. Yes, you could really make these as fancy as you want them to be. They could be high end and stained. They could be MDF, you could paint them. You could even stain the MDF, we do. Sky's the limit. <laughs> We're also gonna use some solar lights. So I went in looking for solar lights, found these, it's beginning of the summer season. So these were literally right in front of me when I walked in the door. They're $5 each. And the great thing about these is that the little post comes right off the bottom. So we're just gonna drop this whole insert right in the top of the lantern and it's perfect. It lights right up. This one too, this one's round. Take the bottom off. So we've got two different types, one square, one circle that we can insert right in the lanterns and immediately add some solar lighting to them. I think they're gonna be great. You could also add, if you wanted, at the bottom or in addition to these solar lights, you could add a little puck at the bottom that oh, yeah. will have LEDs that change colors because then it'll give it a whole themed look to it. I mean, you can even use those fairy light LEDs. Yes, I mean, yeah. There's lots of options to light so them. So many options, just, yeah. But I wanted to use these solar lights. I think these are a great idea. We actually did some solar lanterns that we did out of what, one by twos yeah, or something? Like one two by, by ones, I think, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago that are literally still on our front porch. They're also solar, they light up every night and I often walk up and pat myself on the back. <laughs> she does. <laughs> and then we'll need some stain or paint. We're gonna use some Foxy Hughes paint. The thing about painting them is if you're using this exterior house paint, that's gonna seal them a little bit more. They're gonna be just a little more weather resistant. But if you stain them, they're gonna be great if you have them under some sort of an overhang. So if they are on your front porch, you're likely to have an overhang or back porch, uh, a gazebo, something like that will keep it from being directly in the weather. But that outdoor house paint gives them the extra level of protection to keep them UV resistant and weather resistant. Step two, we're gonna make our design. But before we start designing, I know this is gonna be kerf heavy. A lot of tabs, a lot of slots. I'm gonna whip out my old trusty kerfing tool here and a piece of the material that I'm about to cut. This is scraps from some other project. And I'm gonna find what the perfect kerfing is on this guy. I don't want it too tight, but I also don't want it super loose where it'll be floppy and it won't stay together. I wanna be able to slide this together and it hold together with tension. I don't wanna have to glue it. So I'm thinking, ooh, flat 2.5 is feeling pretty good. 2.49 no, is a little, little tight. Bit, yeah, it's a little bit snug, I want but I'm snug. not having to jam it in there yeah, real but tight. I'm not jamming it in there. I can get it in pretty easy. All right. And you can find this curving template on our website. Uh, just type in curving template in the search bar and he's got lots of versions out there. Yeah, I got a bunch of versions, it's free. I'll leave the link down below. All right, I'll meet you over in Lightburn. First, we mocked it up in Illustrator just so that we get a good look at what we're trying to make and to know what size to make my boxes. So I'm gonna need a box that's seven inches by 13 inches and then a box that's five inches by three inches. So we're gonna go over to Maker Case and we're gonna make our boxes now. 
So my first one was seven, 13, and seven. These are my outside dimensions. Now my custom thickness, you remember when we used my little kerfing tool to check it? We're gonna go ahead and put in 2.25, okay? And now I want finger joints and I want some bigger finger joints. All right, looks good. We'll download this box. I don't need labels. Download. While we're here, we'll just make our other box. So we're gonna go three, five, three. Well, that looks like a big box. Maybe I wanted five, three, five. That's the box I'm looking for. Same material thickness. Um, let's change some of these finger joints a little bit. There you go, that looks good. A download box, download. Now we'll come over to Lightburn and we'll import our first box. All right, so this is gonna be the big box on the bottom. And we'll import our second box. And we'll move this guy over here. This is the top tier, this is gonna be the bottom tier. Now let's make the X's and stuff, the design in the middle. So to do that, let's draw a box. We'll make this box five. We'll unlock it five by 9.5. All right, so this should fit in here. Now I'm gonna use my pencil tool and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm just gonna click in this corner and come on down to this corner and click. Now I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of my pencil tool. Now I'm gonna come up here in this corner Click, come down to this corner, click, and hit escape. Whoop, escape. Go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna grab both of these guys and we're gonna give it an offset. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I have an outward offset. I don't care about the corners really. Uh, it looks a little too big, let's back it down. Do about, just about half an inch. We'll say, okay. And we'll get rid of these two little lines in the middle. Now for this guy, I'm gonna need a little bigger box. So we'll draw, or we'll just do control D to make it a little bit bigger. Now I'll say, we'll lock the perspective. And we'll just say six inches. So now it's a nice big box. I'm gonna grab the big box now, hold shift and grab the little box and come over here and I'm gonna do Boolean subtract. Now this should have created one object, not two boxes, it's one object, control Z. Now I'm gonna grab both of these guys, right? Everything in here and we'll go unite, Boolean union. Bam, now I got my X. I don't need this piece though, so control U, ungroup. And I'll get rid of the outer box. I'll grab these, control G to group. And we'll line these up in here. All right. Now we'll make some boxes. We'll just make a one inch by one inch box. One. And I wanna round the corners a little bit on this. So I'm gonna go over here to shape properties, corner radius. Just go give a, oh, that made it a circle. It's gonna go zero, two. I just wanna give a little roundedness to those corners. All right, let's move this guy up into place. 
and we're gonna use our grid array tool. We'll give them four across. We'll space it out. Okay. I'm gonna grab all these. Well, let's make sure these are grouped. Group. I'm gonna grab these guys. Oops. Ungroup everything here. Ungroup. All right, grab everything here and we'll align center. Perfect. Now I'm gonna grab this. We'll say control D. I'll grab it, hold shift, move it over. I'm gonna grab this one and this one. We'll say control D and I'll move these. Oops. Grab this one and this one. Control D. And we'll move these guys down. Let's make sure everything's aligned center. Everything's aligned center. Center. And one more center. Let's group these guys. Group. Group, group, group. Let's just make sure these are aligned center. Move this whole box down, whoops. All right, now we want a lip on the top and bottom. So let's go ahead and grab this guy and we'll give this thing a, a lip. All right, first we're gonna make a box. Let's see what this box is. This box is seven by seven. So we're gonna make this box seven by seven. Right, but I need a lip on this box. And the lip on uh, this top box is going to be nine inches. So we'll do control D to make a new box. And we'll say nine inches. We're going to make sure everything is center aligned, right? Now I'm going to grab the big box like we did earlier and then the little box. Oops. I'm going to grab the big box and then the little box. And we'll go over here to subtract, subtract, creates one object, right? Now I'm going to grab everything and we're going to unite. There, now look, I got little, my little tabs in here. All right, we're gonna do the same thing to this guy down here. So I'll make another box that's seven by seven. Seven. I'll go do control D so it makes a duplicate. And then this box is gonna be eight. Eight. We'll center, oops. We'll grab everything and center it. I'll grab the big box, then the little box. We'll do a subtract, Boolean subtract. Now I'll grab them both and we'll do a Boolean union. There, that's my, my bottom one. I want the bottom to be two layers, so I'm gonna make another box. Holding the shift. This is just gonna be the bottom bottom, so it's nine. I'm gonna Go ahead and duplicate this box. And we'll make the inside eight. We'll make sure they are centered. Now this inside box, that's mainly just so that I'll know where to place this box up here. So that it looks tiered. So I'm gonna make this blue for a score. Grab these guys, move them up a little bit. All right, so uh, the bottom box is pretty much done. Now let's work on the top tier box over here. We're gonna do pretty much all the same stuff. If you enjoy this type of content, join us over on Patreon where we show even more light burn tips and tricks as well as Adobe Illustrator, Canva, and Creative Space. All right, that's it. I think my cut file is ready to go. Step three, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm gonna take this a large sheet of quarter inch MDF over to the Eon Nova 14 and we'll cut it out.
You could probably do this whole project in a desktop laser, but I'm gonna cut two of them and I wanna do them both at the same time. So I'm using a large sheet. Now we paint. <laughs> we have all of our pieces cut in this cute little kit. I just love a kit. Look at this. Isn't this adorable? She like you can just package this whole thing. We might sell this at the painted tree or something <laughs> as a little lantern kit. How fun is that? Yeah, paint and assemble. All right. So the thing about this, we told you, we warned you there's a lot of kerfing here. You're going to check your so kerf. I, I Let's see what you got. I want to check it before we start painting. I just want to see how it goes. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, perfect amount of kerf. Now, you can't put too much paint on here, otherwise it's gonna change your kerfing. It's gonna get super tight and hard to put together. So we're gonna try to keep thin layers of paint on here, Kim. At the bottom, right? Yeah. Well, like, mainly where the tabs are gonna go in here. Yes. Yeah, yeah you yeah, could yeah. get a nice thick coat right in the middle, I don't care. <laughs> and we're gonna be painting with our Foxy Hughes paints. So, uh, I tried to get Garrett to go with a beachy theme. I was like, let's do something different. Let's go Badger's Legal Lodge and give it a beach theme, or you could do distressed white and black. I think that would be a really cool look. But Garrett was like, let's just keep it neutral. So this we're the, gonna- This is the first one. Let's <laughs> just see how it goes. So we're gonna be using my new favorite neutral color, this Heist Haze. It is a great like taupey color. And then we're gonna be painting the tops and bottoms. Oh, I'm gonna make my own color because I was looking for like a deep brown. So I'm gonna use some pine cone path and I'm gonna mix my own with a little bit of this midnight bandit mask just to try to get this to be a little darker. I don't want it too dark, but this is just a little too light for what I'm thinking. And that's gonna be the tops and the bottoms. The panels are gonna be the highest haze. Now the panels are what you'll be able to swap in and out. So if we keep this a real neutral dark color, you can swap the panels out with any theme. That's what I was Step five, it's time to assemble it. We're gonna start by building the bottom box and the top box, and then we'll put the boxes together. So I'm, I'm a little afraid that the paint is gonna make these things tight, tight fit. Well, that's why you got your friend, the rubber mallet. That's right, I always got my buddy. Well, is the top piece on the right way, or it doesn't matter? That doesn't matter. Nope, it does matter. Why? Because the little boxes are at the... Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Good All thing right. it's removable. That was LOL. a test. That was just a test. And there you go. Hopefully this box isn't as hard. It's smaller. It should be easier. Well, I think we've learned next time, paint your board and then check your kerf. Paint your board. Tip of the day. Because this is painted with a light color and the tops are going to show through, you want to make sure that your, all your edges are clean. The top of the tab is going to come through the other side. <laughs> uh, 
All right, now we're gonna glue this piece onto its base, and then this piece onto the top. Now, before we do that though, let's glue the feet. So the squares that came out of the little windows here at the top, we're gonna we're gonna stack them. What did we decide? Two. Two deep. Yep. Two deep, and make them feet so that this. If you were gonna set it on something and maybe that surface gets wet, you didn't want all of this touching the wet surface. So we're gonna put these little feet on there. And we're gonna use one of these little uh, slat pieces that came out as our spacer. Oh, perfect. Looks like a perfect quarter inch. All right, well, we let this one dry for 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> Put this piece on. Now, I should be able to see my score mark unless I turned it upside down. It's upside down. All right, so I can't see my score mark. Note to, to yourself, there is a score mark, and make sure that's face up. This is our prototype right here. All right, now we're just going to glue that. Score marks are visible on this one, so yep. good news. I actually paid attention to which side these are. Trying to get close to the edge, but not get it goopy. <laughs> just want to make sure it floated. Just want to make sure it's not going anywhere. It's got to live there forever. I want to be able to Ooh. see it on, whoa. It's like it's on ice. See it on my front porch and still pat myself on the back. <laughs> It'll just be the base left. It'll just be the glue <laughs> with some uh, shreds of MDF attached to it. That's all that will be left. All right, let's put that light in there. All right, and now the best part. Like I said, you can just take this off and all we're going to do is set this down in there. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know if you, you probably can't see it from down there, but we can see the light turn on. Step six, profit. You could probably get about $45 for these guys. Put a little greenery in them, sell the sizzle. Definitely. These are, we have about $12 with the caps. We have a maybe $12 worth of paint and wood and time in these. It's super affordable to make these. And then like he said, you could sell them for $45. And then you could sell add-on kits, the sides, maybe the little top pieces for $20 to go with it. I think they're a great little addition to your craft booth. You're going to make them interchangeable, paint your pieces, then measure your curving. That was our lesson learned, <laughs> our pro tip. Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. And there's a ton of stuff happening over there. There's a heck of a community. I'm gonna give this one a little balance. Just, ooh, this is a lot heavier than I expected it to be. I don't it's know beefy. If it's a, see if I can get one finger on it. Oh gosh. Ooh. ooh. Oh, oh this gosh. is pretty easy. This is easy. This is easy. 